Tonight is August the 9th, 2023. I gotta show you my latest AM transmitter. This is the microphone I use. It's a, uh, what is this thing? It's a Lewitt, L-E-W-I-T-T. -T. You know, it's quite a nice little microphone, it seems. Okay. It, the microphone, goes into this little module right here to get it to give it phantom power because it's a condenser mic. They call it a uh, large diaphragm, large diaphragm mic, condenser mic. Uh, the output of it I do have on an attenuator and it goes in to this little speech amplifier right here which makes it, gives it, you know, more of a communication quality sound. It's interesting how I, I see here in the um, on the viewing screen of the camera that the uh, the filaments of the tubes look purple. They're actually orange. These are a couple of 6B4Gs, original probably from the 1950s. I've made this comment before. I sent them actually to my friend over in Poland, and uh, because of some mix up there with them with FedEx and how they tried to extort some more money out of my friend and he refused to pay them. They sent it all the way back to me. So these things went to uh, Poland and back. <clears throat> they just weren't ready to leave me yet, as, as, as my friend commented. Anyway, this little amplifier right here is uh, built straight out of a uh, Collins KW1 schematic. I made it component correct. So there you go, for what that's worth. Okay, and then it comes out of there and goes into this little jewel right here. I just got this in today. I wanted some tone controls. You can, you, you can actually see it modulating just a little bit right there. I don't overwhelm the camera. There you go. See me here if I talk, if I talk directly into the microphone. You can see it anyway. It's a little headphone amplifier. Vacuum tube of course. Got tone controls, treble, bass, and, and volume. And then that comes out of there and goes into this little Macintosh MC40 down here. You may think, why in the world are I running through all that? Well, i got to have enough power. I've got to have the um, start over again. i got to have this voltage to drive the microphone. i got to have this to amplify the low level signal of the microphone. I have this one to control the, the tone. And then I have to have this one down here because I need 26 watts of output, reliable 26 watts, to drive this modulator right here, which is a pair of 3-400Zs running at 3,000 volts on the plate. Uh, the power supply for it's down here. There's not much to see in a power supply, really. Just big transformers and chokes and capacitors and all that kind of stuff. Here's my control circuitry for a Right here for the uh, for the power supply. Here's fuse, uh, AC input. This right here is uh, the control relay that turns the high voltage on or off. And then as we move up here, here's the amplifier itself. It's a single 3400Z running grounded grid and running Class C. Class C grounded grid is very common. It's actually a lot more common than I realized. Plate modulating it is a little weird, but it works. It actually works quite well. And I get just a little over 500 watts of carrier to the antenna, and I can modulate that 100%. Or I can just talk softly and keep the uh, PEP output at 1500 watts or below and, and actually stay legal. And uh, then up at the top I have a uh, this is actually quite a nice little scope. I'm a Tektronix scope lover, but this uh, this little BK Precision right here, it's got a nice big screen, let me get that glare off of it, and it uh, does an excellent job, it really does. I monitor the output right here on this uh, REA modulation monitor. Uh, the left meter is uh, negative modulation, the right meter positive, and I have a circuit I can't show you all every detail. I have a circuit built in that's called a, a keep alive circuit that keeps the uh, negative peaks from shutting the carrier completely off. Now to tune the grid, I was well, in the dark, get me out of the shadows. This is a, a little outboard um, 
antenna tuner I used to tune the, the cathode of this guy right here. It's okay to, uh, to tune your amplifier with an outboard uh, tuner if, if you can keep the, uh, the connections from the output of the tuner into your amplifier really short. They say less than a tenth of a wavelength. I say uh, try to keep it down to like 1% of the wavelength. You, you want to keep it quite as short as you can. I don't know if I can get around there just so you can see it or not. But it comes out of here, right here. This is where it comes in from the RF exciter. It gives me the frequency I'm transmitting on. And this is where it comes out and goes straight into there. So it's just got, you know, about, oh, I guess the things are about 8 inches a piece. So it's like 16 inches of uh, jumper cable in there. And I've just got it hanging right there. On the side, I had it on the top. But I wanted to put the oscilloscope up there. Oh, and by the way, yeah, here's the RF, uh, not RF, the audio input coming from the Mac amp. And I put it on a stereo type um, quarter inch jack because I have a lot of different configurations. And then I put a switch in here where I can either ground the ring I can leave both the ring, the tip and the ring open, so I've got uh, two wires coming in, or I can ground the tip. Just depends on how it comes up. See, the thing about it is, I'm not going to be plugging a microphone directly into there, of course. But um, like, for example, I had, I did this, I did that over here a long time ago. If you notice, one says uh, standard mic, the other one says Collins PTT. Well. Most microphones have the tip. You know, this is called the tip. And this is called the ring, tip and ring. And then this is the ground. Well, most microphones have the microphone connection on the tip. And whatever they have on the ring, maybe nothing. But in college transmitters, they make the tip the PTT, the push to talk. And they put the hot microphone connection on the, on the ring. So that's why this one is wired like that. Because I have a lot of Collins stuff that I like to use, but this being a, you know, a store-bought cable, and get that in there. And I got one more contraption to play with, and that's just a little Behringer. Um, it, it, it has a thing they call warmth right here, which I don't know if I like it or not. I'm not even sure I like how it makes it sound. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I'm just being picky. And uh, in that case, I plug the, the microphone directly into here because this provides the phantom voltage for it. And then I take the output of this and run it down into the Mac amp. So in that case, I would be eliminating this one and this one. I just can't get over that. I think that thing is just so cute. Anyway, the insanity of a ham radio operator building. And this is my uh, older AM transmitter. I'll never make one I don't think any better than that. It runs push-pull 812s and is plate modulated with a pair of full 125s. I've shown this one a number of times, so I won't go into that again. But anyway, just for fun, there you go. Hope you enjoy so many crazy projects. It's a grounded grid. Class C, plate modulated AM transmitter. Stay safe, my friends.